Ko, the adversary, Hashatan, the devil, made this bold claim. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Since that time, he has been doing the utmost to live up to that statement. Everything that Yah has created, the devil has perverted within his corrupt, wicked kingdom, which we all inhabit. The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window, or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. shine the stars, and I was determined to ascend above the clouds to the high sacredness of God. I was adoring all my eminence until your father, Adam, was created. I couldn't believe that I, the greatest of all, had to prostrate to an insignificant human. Why was Adam given the whole earth to rule? Clearly, I deserved it all, without a doubt. I am the one to rule and command the Since earth. Since the day of my refusal to kneel, I turned into the worst creature, became the enemy of God and his faithful servants. I hate and envy you the same way I envied your father. Since you were born, I have been sinfully harming your life. I will not enter hell alone. I want you to share the pain with me and the curse that will descend upon me. I want to see you burn, cry, and scream as I will. I will uncover the secrets behind my deceptions, the cunning tricks, the manipulation of strategies, and use it all to lead you to sin. I first try to drag you to infidelity and associating partners with God, which is the greatest sin. If you resist and don't get tricked, I like this one. I then move to plan B, which is to call you to major sins, like abandoning your prayers, adultery, causing harm to your fellow man, drinking alcohol. If you were a true believer and kept steadfast, I don't get discouraged. I call you towards minor sins. If you ignore me, I then occupy your days with permissible matters that are not sins or good deeds, like overeating, pursuing worldly affairs. Then it is time for my most powerful trick. I use my elite slaves, those who dedicate their lives to me and my agenda. I command them to manipulate your life, to harm you, prosecute you, and to distort your reputation.
The Matrix is a system, Neo. That system is our enemy. But when you're inside, you look around, what do you see? Businessmen, teachers, lawyers, carpenters. The very minds of the people we are trying to save. But until we do, these people are still a part of that system, and that makes them our enemy. You have to understand, most of these people are not ready to be unplugged. And many of them are so inert, so hopelessly dependent on the system, that they will fight to protect it. Were you listening to me, Neo? Or were you looking at the woman in the red dress? I was... Look again. Freeze it. This is the group that largely popularized this belief that we are heading out of the age of Pisces and into the astrological age of Aquarius, which to them will be an age of unity of humanity, an age of enlightenment, a spiritual age of consciousness, so to speak.
very clear, yes, there's going to be a one world political, economic, religion. And this is what all the globalists, the, the elite, the high level occultists, the high level New World Order people, this is what they're wanting. This is what the Bible pretty much clearly predicts as well. And this is obviously what we're moving to. By New Age, I am speaking about a worldview that has many facets and components, such as astrological and zodiacal beliefs in the New Age concept, channeling higher powers to achieve knowledge, meditation, the belief that all is one or forms of monism, the belief that we can attain godhood, esotericism, or in other words, reinterpreting ancient texts to find hidden meanings and unify all religious belief into one. The belief that we need a one world system for the coming age of Aquarius. If we take a cue from Bugs Bunny, we also see this animal spirit as a trickster. Interestingly enough, Bugs Bunny has been pictured with the book Principia Discordia. In Norse mythology, this trickster god is known as Loki, who is a transgender, shape shifting troublemaker. A trickster is a person who cheats or deceives people, and we know that the greatest deceiver is Satan. Everything you could ever desire. Every happiness you can imagine. Every pleasure the false gods have denied you. I will grant you. For I am kind. Embrace me as your king and as your god. Yes! I want it all! Wealth! Women! The devil seems to have quite the interest in music. Whether it's the satanic imagery that's ever pervasive in metal, or the legendary fiddle duel in The Devil Went Down to Georgia, it would appear that the Prince of Darkness likes a good tune as much as you and I. But there's one tale of the devil in music that captivates like no other, and it's one that's been told for centuries. The deal with the devil. In the 1920s and 30s, a pair of blues musicians in the Mississippi Delta are alleged to have run-ins with the devil. First came Tommy Johnson, a guitar virtuoso known for his eerie yodeling. Johnson's brother Liddell spread the legend of Tommy's Faustian bargain. One night, the story goes, Tommy Johnson went to the crossroads just before midnight and played guitar until a big black man came up to him, took his guitar, and tuned it. After that, Tommy Johnson could play the guitar like no man alive. Outside of the alleged deal with the devil and his influence on blues music, Johnson's life was rather uneventful though. That can't be said for Robert Johnson, unrelated to Tommy, another musician who apparently made a Faustian bargain. Johnson was one of the most impressive guitar players of his time and one of the most important musicians of all time. And when he was a young man in the late 1920s, he started to play guitar, but apparently he had no talent for it. Fellow blues man Sun House famously remembered how Johnson played the guitar. Such a racket you never heard. It'd make the people mad, you know. They'd come out and say, why don't y'all go in and get that guitar away from that boy? He's running people crazy with it. I'd come back in and I'd scold him about it. Then one day Robert Johnson left Robinsonville where he had been living. When he came back, he was a changed man. Johnson returned with incredible guitar skills, sliding around the neck seamlessly while maintaining steady rhythms. Legend has it when Keith Richards first heard Johnson play, he thought it was two guitar players. Rumors started to grow that, like Tommy Johnson before him, Robert had sold his soul to the devil at midnight at a crossroads. 
And if you listen to Robert Johnson's music, it's easy to believe it too. Atop his virtuoso play, Johnson's lyrics have a haunting desperation to them, and he even sings of his relationship with the devil. Hellhound on My Trail is a masterful song that takes the trope of the rambling blues man and puts a new spin on it. The reason Johnson is a traveling, wandering vagabond is because he's got hellhounds following him. You could even look at this song as the middle of a trilogy of songs chronicling his run-in with the devil. Crossroad Blues is where he sells his soul, and then the trilogy ends with Me and the Devil Blues, which has some of the most haunting opening lines ever. Well, at this moment, ooh, when you knock the phone, my dude. And I said, hello, Satan. I believe it's time to go. And one of the biggest uh, uh, tools in the hands of the masters who run this world is Hollywood. Hollywood is an incredible story. Uh, I've said this, and maybe many hearing me now have heard me say this, but I'll say it again. That <clears throat> the white man's establishment comes from Europe. And, and northern, southern, well all four, all north, east, south, and western Europe... Uh, even at the time of the Roman Empire and before, that whole section of Europe that we call the center for the white man's presence on the earth <clears throat> was, was quite literally ruled over. Uh, ancient Europe was ruled over by a priesthood called the Druids. And the Druids were very, they were the, they were the ministers, the, the priests, the judges, the lawyers. Uh, they were the religious leaders, so there was a priesthood that dominated Europe. It still does. Europe is still Druidic, and America is a Druidic country. And unless you understand the Druidic system, then you're never going to figure out what's going on in America and England. <clears throat> but one of the most important symbols in the Druid system was a magic wand, like Merlin, the magician with the magic wand, and also um, the orchestra leaders and conductors always have a magic wand and you have better play to the tune of the master he directs you to play and he directs you to stop with the magic wand so you're dancing to his music okay magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree it's made out of hollywood and Hollywood is a Druidic establishment. And the symbols, the words, the terms, the stories. That cast a spell on you. So that people go out from the movie and think in their minds, this is the way you normally would react to a situation, the way that the guy in the movie did. And so that's why today, in the Western civilization, especially in the West, our, <clears throat> our ability to work with each other and live together as humans is so screwed up because we've been watching so much television and so many movies and so much silliness coming out of Hollywood so much violence and sex and drugs and all the rest of it that people have no idea in the world how to live anymore Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. The Bible said, God same shall return as the king of kings, the lords of lords, the conqueror and of a tribe of Judah. We describe our music as a road to consciousness. Well, we call it music still, you know? Revolutionary music. Revolutionary in what respect? Is Revolutionary in the mind, you know, bring the reality of, of what has been hidden yeah. from the wise and the prudent to the babe and the suckling. Exodus!
this idea it was kind of a virologist idea. Um, he believed that you could cure racism and hate, literally cure it by injecting music and love into people's lives. When they was scheduled to perform at a peace rally, gunmen came to his house and shot him down. Two days later, he walked out on that stage and sang. Somebody asked him why. He said, the people who are trying to make this world worse are not taking a day off. How can I? Light up the darkness. 79-year-old retired officer of the CIA, Bill Oxley, has made a series of stunning confessions since he was admitted to the Mercy Hospital in Maine on Monday and told he has weeks to live. He claims he committed 17 assassinations for the American government between 1974 and 1985, including the music icon Bob Marley. He says he was part of an operative cell of three members which carried out political assassinations across the country and occasionally in foreign countries. Most of their victims were political activists, journalists, and union leaders, but he also confesses to assassinating a few scientists, medical researchers, artists and musicians whose ideas and influence represented a threat to the interests of the United States. He claims he had no problem with going through with the assassination of Bob Marley. Because I was a patriot, I believed in the CIA, and I didn't question the motivation of the agency. I've always understood that sometimes sacrifices have to be made for the greater good. But Mr. Oxley confesses that Bob Marley remains unique among his victims, as he was the only victim he felt anything for. The others were Bob Marley was Bob Marley. I was no closer to being a long-haired hippie back then than I am now, but I must admit Bob's music did move me. It held some power over me. Dottie claims to have mixed feelings about Bob Marley's death. On the one hand, Marley was a good man, a beautiful soul with profound artistic gifts who did not deserve to have his life cut short. But according to Mr. Oxley, Bob Marley was also placing the goals of the CIA in jeopardy and threatening the existence of the United States. He was succeeding in creating a revolution that used music as a more powerful tool than bullets and bombs. Bob Marley in 1976 was a very serious threat to the global status quo and to the hidden power brokers implementing their plan for a new world order. As far as the agency was concerned, Bob Marley was too successful, too famous, too influential, a Jamaican Rastaman who started using his funds and fame to support causes around the world that were in direct conflict with the CIA, to be honest. He signed his own death warrant. It's not like we didn't warn him. We sent a few guys to shoot up his house in Kingston, Mr. Oxley says, referring to a shooting in the Marley residence that left the singer with an injured arm and chest. We had a message for him. We impressed upon him the gravity of the situation he found himself in. He didn't listen. Two days later, in the mountains. I stuck him with the pin. How Bob Marley was murdered by the CIA. Two days after Bob Marley was shot in the left arm by one of three gunmen who ambushed the singer and some of his crew in his house in Kingston. And after a brief stint in hospital, Bob Marley traveled to the protective hills of the Bloom Mountains and spent time at the highest point in Jamaica, rehearsing for an upcoming concert. According to Mr. Oxley, he used press credentials to gain access to Bob Marley during his Bloom Mountains retreat. He introduced himself as a famous photographer working for the New York Times and gave Bob Marley a gift. I gave him a pair of Converse All-Stars. Size 10. When he tried on the right shoe, he screamed out Ouch. That was it. His life was over right there and then. The nail in the shoe was tainted with cancer viruses and bacteria. If it pierced his skin, which it did, it was good night nurse. 
His 300-pound body cast an immense shadow on the Pro Bowl, the game he knew so well, literally metaphorically. Reggie White was named to 13 Pro Bowls, has a record nine and a half sacks in the All-Star game, including a record tying four in one game back in 1987. But two months ago, White tragically and unexpectedly died. Cause of death, sarcoidosis, an inflammation of the tissues in his lungs that spread to his heart and liver, causing cardiac arrest, coupled with an attack of sleep apnea. Andrew Kramer has the story about the final years of Reggie White's life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. An ordained minister since the age of 17, White preached the gospel throughout his NFL career. I've always done my best to honor the name of Jesus. Nicknamed the Minister of Defense, White spoke openly about his Christian faith during his 15 years in the league. I didn't do it my way. I, I, I tried to make sure I did it God's way, the way he would have me to do it. The kingdom of God. Throughout his life, White had spent countless hours preaching and millions of dollars supporting the church. But after his retirement from the NFL in 2000, his spiritual journey took an unexpected turn. He began to seriously question the word he had been spreading. He stopped preaching and never set foot in a church again. He resented the fact that pastors knew that what they were preaching in the pulpit was tradition and it wasn't from the word of God. He resented the fact that people asked him to preach and speak because he was just because he was a football player. If you'd like to know Christ is your personal Savior, pray this prayer with me. Dear God. Previously, Reggie had always taught and preached from the New Testament, but as he told the NFL Network in December, he wanted to go directly to the original source, the Old Testament, which was written in Hebrew. You won't hear me anymore saying God spoke to me about something, unless, 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 unless I re read something in Scripture and I know, okay, now this is pertaining to what I'm feeling inside. I came to the realization that, you know what, if I'm, if I'm going to find God, I better go find it for myself. I got to go back and research the scripture in his original language to see what it said. Because he really understood the Torah as his original sightings, he saw that just a little bit of distortion made a difference in the content. And that disturbed him. And that's, that, that's what made him uh, learn more. In 2003, White took a trip to Israel to better understand the Holy Land from a biblical standpoint. There he met Nehemiah Gordon, a biblical Hebrew scholar who would become his teacher. He had looked at many different translations in English and he saw that they never match each other. That they'll always, uh, often in very crucial things, they'll translate differently. And he realized that any translation that's someone else's interpretation, he wanted to take the middleman out and get to the original message he kept saying, I, I, I can't know the Son, you know, which is the Messiah, without knowing the Father. And so he spent every awakening moment learning about the Father, which took him to Hebrew. For the last nine months of Reggie's life, Gordon taught him the Hebrew language, twice a week, over the telephone from Jerusalem. He was making great leaps and bounds in his uh, study of Hebrew. He would spend sometimes 10 hours a day studying Hebrew. The important years of his life were that three years he was studying Hebrew and where he was studying the Old Testament. I think so. Because he came to grips with himself. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled.
אתם רוצים מצוטים בבית? בגלל זה אני אצלוב אותך. איך אתה מעז להטיף היהודים התמימים? אלוהים! למה עזבת לי? אתה נאצי ישו, אתה נאצי! טופי! לא, טופי, אני מפחד! אני הלכתי על המים, אני הפכתי את הדברים לעוגה! לא! אני לא, אני לא ישו! זו טעות! אני משה רבנו! אל תהיי במזמרים, טופי, לא! זה רק אפק, פחדן! לא! The Wailing Wall is the seat of a satanic ritual outlined by the 13th century Jewish occult system known as the Kabbalah as expounded in the Zohar and expanded upon by the 18th century Hasidic movement. You see, this so-called divine presence at the Wailing Wall is actually the Kabbalistic feminine emanation of their false god, the Shekinah. Watch closely how the rabbis thrust their pelvises and penises back and forth in a prescribed prayer movement called davening, in which the Jew copulates with the Shekinah in order to give birth to an erotic union with the Ein Sof, the Kabbalistic masculine emanation of their false god. Now watch this young Jewish boy who, instinctively knowing that davening is a lewd and embarrassing act, just can't bring himself to perform the thrusting of his pelvis. My friends, for Rand Paul and for so many other saps like McCain, Bush, Obama, Clinton, and Romney, to perform the right of political passage at the Wailing Wall is nothing less than to shake hands with the devil. The six-pointed star is called a hexagram, and to many Christians, the symbol represents the nation of Israel. They call it the Star of David. However, as mentioned earlier, no such Star of David can be found in the Bible or the Torah. But for a closer look at history and the purpose of this symbol, you will find that it reveals something much different to what we're being told. The star consists of two intertwined triangles, one pointing up to God and the other pointing down to man, symbolizing the relationship between the two worlds, the spiritual world and the physical world. While there are many other interpretations for the symbol, it is commonly said to mean as above, so below. However, numerically, it is also representative of the number 666, which biblically is the number of the beast. But to break it down more clearly, we can see that there are six points on this star. There are also six triangles or pyramids within the star. And then finally, there is also a six-sided polygon within the star, 666. One of the main reasons it's called the Star of David is because King Solomon adopted it as his main symbol when he was building pagan temples for some of his pagan wives. Former Satanists adamantly state that King Solomon actually became one of the most powerful shamans in world history, having slipped deeply into the practice of the occult. This view is also fully endorsed by 1 Kings 11, 4-9. Just to highlight this in better detail, Dr. O.J. Graham, in his book, The Six-Pointed Star, claims, The first mention of this symbol was back in 922 BC, when Solomon got involved in witchcraft and magic. This book traces the worship of Ashtoreth and Chayun and Rimfan from the Egyptians before Solomon's time. Then afterwards, in the Arab magic and witchcraft, through the Middle Ages, it was used by the Druids during the highest Sabbath of the witches called Halloween. The family of Rothschild, the pioneers of Zionism and Hitler have all used this symbol, as has the cassette. Finally, it is featured on the flag of Israel. Today it is recognized as the Jewish symbol. However, it is anything but Jewish. Yeah, ye take up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Rimfan, figures which ye made to worship them and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Some Christians relate the symbol of Moloch with Lucifer. However, there are far more esoteric meanings behind it. According to many biblical commentaries, the word Remphan is synonymous with the planet Saturn. Remphan also appears to have been understood by the Septuagint translators as an equivalent for the Hebrew word Chayun, which is supposed by many scholars to be identified with the planet Saturn. 
And keeping that Chayun word in mind, we also come across this which is written in Amos 5.26. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and the Chayun your images, the star of your God which ye made to yourselves. Moloch, Chayun, and Rimfam are all names for the star god Saturn, whose symbol is a six-pointed star formed by two triangles. Saturn was the supreme god of the Chaladins, whose teachings can be found in Freemasonry today. And unsurprisingly, this crypto-Judaic front known as Freemasonry also has the great goal to one day rebuild Solomon's temple. That's the occult one, not the Jewish one. This is your prophecy update. Bible prophecy foretells the building of the third temple. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3-4 through 4, says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. It's one of the most terrifying phenomena known to man, sleep paralysis, the frightening ordeal of waking up suddenly in the dead of night, temporarily unable to move a muscle or even speak. For some it happens nightly, and others experience horrifying visions and sensations during their sleep paralysis. 3,600 random people were asked whether they had experienced symptoms of sleep paralysis. A shocking 65% said they had, and research undertaken by the Sleep Paralysis Project found that certain social groups tend to be more at risk of falling victim to the frightening disorder. For example, their test results showed that a higher number of African Americans suffer from sleep paralysis, and the most common age range that is affected by the sleeping disorder is 16 to 43 year olds. Although it's hard to gauge, as people younger and also older than this have reported being affected too. You cannot wake yourself up. Some people have mastered a practice called lucid dreaming, which means that they will retain a certain amount of control and consciousness while they are dreaming, allowing them for instance to wake themselves up from an intense nightmare. But unfortunately, this does not work for sleep paralysis. This is because it occurs when a person is halfway between being awake and in REM sleep, which means they are not technically dreaming, as their eyes are still open and their senses are still alert. You may see things that you do not like. Though it's rarer than the sensation of being paralysed itself, some people do report very frightening visions and sensations while in their paralysis state. For instance, many have reported feeling a weight on their chest during a sleep paralysis episode, as though an invisible being of some kind is pinning them to the bed. Others report hearing voices in the room, and in one case, a man reported he heard heavy breathing and deep growling coming from just behind him, though of course he was unable to turn around and look. However, the scariest thing about sleep paralysis is that some people experiencing a sleep paralysis attack actually claim to see figures in the room with them. That could be dark shadows looming over them while they are completely unable to move. People see the same things. One of the most inexplicable and terrifying facts about sleep paralysis is that people from all around the world who have had no contact with each other have reported seeing the same thing during their episodes. The most commonly reported apparition is the old hag, Many authors and psychiatrists who have studied sleep paralysis have noted that many of their patients report the presence of a hideous old woman who seems to take pleasure in the fear and panic she is causing, laughing at her victims as they lie there. <laughs> if this sounds like a joke, then keep in mind the hag is nothing new. Throughout the history of sleep paralysis, she has been described. In fact, in Scandinavian folklore, the belief is that sleep paralysis itself is brought on by the soul of a fallen woman, which has left its own body to terrify innocent people while they sleep in their beds. This entity, which Scandinavians refer to as Mare, is in fact where the term Nightmare originates from. This reoccurring apparition has led many to believe that sleep paralysis is supernatural in nature, rather than medical as it's very difficult to come up with an explanation as to why so many people report seeing the same entity.
testament to the importance of this occasion, not only for the Trump administration, but in a very personal way for you. For you, each of you, for the pursuit of peace, and for President Trump himself. Thank you. In Jerusalem, King Solomon built our temple, built our temple, built our temple, which stood for many centuries. The Temple Mount is in our hands. The Temple Mount is in our hands, is in our hands. Words that lifted the spirit of the entire nation. We are in Jerusalem and we are here to stay. coming when I will restore the fortunes of my people Israel and Judah. I will bring them home to this land that I gave to their ancestors, and they will possess it again. I, Yah, have spoken. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Everybody in your phones, though, all y'all, y'all the real cowards. Record that, too. Everybody on the phone, record that. Coward. Everybody recording the phone, real coward. Ain't cool, man, y'all in the middle of the street, huh? Look, she's smiling and laughing. They laughing. Look, he laughing, he got a big smile on his face, <laughs> bro. He got a big smile on his face. Look at your man right here, it's supposed to be your man. He dying, he can't, look, he can't even <laughs> laugh. Look, 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 listen to that, look, they all laughing, little bro. But you really upset, and you really upset. You more mad than he is, I can see it in your face. So you fighting for a reason. He only fighting you because you want to fight him. Because you no, mad. He's kidding to me, he touched me. So, so you, so you, so you, so you, I don't even know. So you defending yourself. Yeah, I don't right, know so, what's going so, on. So look, so our little brother, so you on the right, you defending yourself. But look, look at the crowd. The little brother, look, whatever you text him for, that you don't know, you was ill advised. My thing is, look at the trick of the devil. Who ill advised you? Look around. Who ill advised you? Who told you wrong? Who told you wrong? You don't gotta answer that. You said, who told you wrong though, little bro? And the only reason I'm saying this to all y'all, yo, because y'all almost men. All of y'all, yo. Y'all almost men. Y'all ain't kids no more. Y'all girls ain't little girls no more. Y'all, look, yo. Y'all y'all men, yo. Y'all men, yo. 14, 15, 16, 17. Y'all men. Start acting like it, yo. We ain't gonna get nowhere like this, yo. Y'all gonna wind up like the nigga I don't wanna be like, yo. Word up. You <laughs> Word up. Look. They, look. They still laughing. They still laughing. You upset. Think about that. Anybody can laugh at you. Dave, y'all ugly. Straight up, yo. You big as hell. Straight up, yo. Straight up. Anybody can laugh at you? Why you upset like that? They ain't your friend. And they say, let like, you do the dirty work. I don't even know who went on, but I know who went on, though. And they say, let like, you do the dirty work. I'm a freeze. Can't you, little bro? I'm a freeze. Oh, yeah, word. Say what? Bro, what? 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 You not no punk. He ain't no, but they know he not no punk. They know he not no punk. So they gonna send you what, 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 what? Now y'all out here fighting in the middle of the street. Now y'all out here fighting in the middle of the street, huh? Now all y'all, hey yo, please, yo. Sound like a little bro. All y'all though, yo, yo, y'all got parents, yo. 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 Word up, man. And if y'all live around here, y'all listen, we're good. Mess that up, Bop. Mess that up, Bop. Hey, yo, you, I know where you from. I know where you from. Humble beginnings. Your mom and dad work hard to get where they at, yo. They work hard to get where they at, yo. I'm telling y'all, yo, little bruh, your dad doing life. 
You think it's a game out here? Ain't no game out here. It's real out here, little bro. Y'all playing games, yo. Stop playing games, man. Y'all don't see, yo, I'm telling y'all, man. Don't let nobody do that to y'all, man. Y'all shake hands, bro. I'm telling y'all, y'all gotta do that, bro. Like, right now. Like, I'm telling y'all gotta do that, bro. Follow me. Shake hands, bro. Shake hands, bro. Bro, shake hands, bro. Shake hands, y'all. Yo, shake hands, bro. Take my shoe like you. I ain't leaving, bro. Y'all don't shake hands, bro. I'm not leaving, bro. I'm not leaving, bro. Shake hands, bro. But just shake his hand, bro. Shake hands, bro. You got spit in your hands, bro. That's it, bro. That nigga in here. Yo, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> now look. 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 They want y'all to be enemies. Now look. He can't even stop smiling. <laughs> you he ugly as hell. <laughs> <laughs> you got that You got that one. sound of good faith. Put your hand back out, bro. He gonna shake it this time, I promise you. Put your hand back out, bro. He gonna shake it, bro. Y'all be good, bro. For they shall be called the children of God. I just want to take a mo few moments to thank the House for the, the work they did recently on H.R. 1242. And I want to urge the Senate to take action on this bill as well. As I rise in support of it, uh, it's 1242, it's titled 400 Years of African American History Commission Act. Deuteronomy 30. If you read that chapter, it's a call for a term. And I encourage you to begin the restoration of the Creator's appointed times. Right there's a link to it. Keep His commandments. Believe on the Most High and accept His Son because you, if you do so, one day you will have back what your ancestors lost. One day you'll have all these things restored unto you again. And, you know, it's just like Isaiah 56 and Isaiah chapter 58. I hold so tightly to those chapters myself in the scripture because I'm a Gentile. I long for the new kingdom. I want to be gathered to be a part of it. But you are a very specific people. And for those of you who are listening, such as myself, uh, like myself that are Gentiles, it's very important that we understand who the true Hebrews are. Because those that are posers in the land of Israel right now, until the times of the Gentile be fulfilled, these people will not inherit the uh, the land of Israel. They're only here for a time being, for a short space. These people that are posers in the land will hold this, the land of Israel. They are not the true Hebrew, and they never will be. They're, the life is in the blood. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of god almighty behold i come as a thief blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame and he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Babylon the Great is fallen. You see, the nations will in fact serve Yah as citizens of the kingdom. This is why we see them mentioned in a favorable light once the kingdom is established. Concerning New Jerusalem, we are told, The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. And they will bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. However, as much honor as the nations and their kings will bring into Jerusalem, 
these nations will exist at a lower level than the people of Israel. For Yah is a sovereign of order, and that order is evident in the very foundations, walls, and streets of the city of New Jerusalem itself. This will be explained shortly. You see, while the nations, when they are fully righteous, will be seen as precious metals to be stored in Yah's treasury, the nation of Israel itself is viewed in highest esteem. For Yah has chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. For you are a pure people to Yah your Elohim. Yah your Elohim has chosen you to be a people for his own possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. So faithful nations will be treasured by Yah, but a faithful Israel will be treasured above all, and that is pictured in their representation. While Israel is pictured as gold and silver, tried in a fire in certain prophetic analogies, the righteous nations are the highest fulfillment of the precious and semi-precious metals, gold, silver, bronze, iron. And ultimately, Israel is seen as precious jewels or gemstones, which are more precious than precious metals. This is all part of Yah's order, and it will be an eternal one. On that day, Yah the Elohim will rescue his people, just as a shepherd rescues his sheep. They will sparkle in this land like jewels in a crown. This was all promised back in Isaiah's day, for in chapter 54 of his book, we read concerning Israel. O afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony, and your foundations I will lay in sapphires. Moreover, I will make your battlements of rubies, and your gates of crystal, and your entire wall of precious stones. While the city of New Jerusalem is pure gold, representing the multitude of nations that will flow into it, the few gemstones represent the people of Israel, which will be a remnant by comparison, but far more precious in terms of value or worth. And this is why the book of Isaiah also frames the relationship between the nations and its various kings and the redeemed people of Israel as follows. Foreigners will come to rebuild your towns, and their kings will serve you. For though I have destroyed you in my anger, I will now have mercy on you through my grace. Your gates will stay open day and night to receive the wealth of many lands. The kings of the world will be led as captives in a victory procession. For the nation and the kingdom which will not serve you will perish, and the nations will be utterly ruined. The descendants of your tormentors will come and bow before you. Those who despise you will kiss your feet. They will call you the city of Yah, and Zion of the Pure One of Israel. Though you were once forsaken and hated, with no one traveling through you, I will make you beautiful forever, a joy to all generations. Powerful kings and mighty nations will satisfy your every need, as though you were a child nursing at the breast of a queen. You will know at last that I, Yah, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel.